25. I remember being 25. A hundred years ago. Where did we live off here? Let me see. Okay. I think we're coming to... Oh, okay. After Jesus finishes telling us not to worry about the things of this world, he says, Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Right before that, he said that our Heavenly Father knows what we need. Then he says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God in his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Again, it is a question of priorities. It is so easy to get bogged down in the needs and priorities of this world. Let me say that again. It is, again, it is a question of priorities. It is so easy to get bogged down with the needs and priorities of this world. There is something that is greatly complicating matters in our present day and age which Jesus did not need to point out so strongly at that time, in parentheses, because everyone already understood the clear teaching of the law in its regard, in parentheses. The law of the Jews and the writings of the prophets are against lending money at usury. It was considered to be quite an abomination. They could lend money at interest to a Gentile, but not among their own people. Their own economic system was not based on interest on banking as we know it today. I have no idea where he's going with this. One of the principal things, one of the principal things that causes a lot of worry about tomorrow is when we are in debt. The more the debt, the greater the worry. I know lots of people who would really like to serve God. They would like to help with God's work but they cannot spare a cent because their monthly budget is already tied up. They have their house payment, car payment, credit card payments, loan payments, and charge accounts at the major department stores. Even gas is being bought by a credit card. The interest is incredible. It may soon be to the point where our entire economic system in America is going to collapse because it is not based on reality, but instead is leveraged in, into place. It is leveraged into place by credit. For every dollar bill that is issued by the government in the United States or Canada, the commercial banks can theoretically lend 10 or 12 times that much. <clears throat> what happens if the whole thing starts to cave in and collapse? Where is that going to put the people who have their faith in money or in the stock market or in their savings account? They might wake up some morning and everything they have, everything they have placed their trust in could be gone. But if our faith is in the Lord and we invest our earthly treasures in what he wants in his kingdom, he will always be here. With him, you can get a most wonderful return on your investment. I cannot think of a better place to invest time, resources, money, or what have you than in the kingdom of God. Seeking after his righteousness. I just got a notice popped up here. <clears throat> Seeking after his righteousness also means... Oh, sorry. Uh, I cannot think of a better place to invest time, resources, money, or what have you than in the kingdom of God. Seeking after his righteousness... Remember that here, righteousness also means justice. It means doing and being what God thinks. Doing and being what God thinks is right. If you spend your time worrying about how to be the kind of person that God wants you to be and how to be the work that God wants you to do, I'm sorry, and how to do the work that God wants you to do with the gifts and resources that God has given you, the Lord will supply your needs. Let me say that again. If you spend your time worrying about how to be the kind of person that God wants you to be and how to do the work that God wants you to do with the gifts and resources that God has given you, the Lord will supply your needs. You might be wondering, hey, I don't have that many gifts. Or I don't have that many special talents, whatever the case is. Um, that may be the case in this world. 
but you've also been promised John 14, 15, 16. Okay, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, you get a lot of power in that. You become a, a, a useful tool for the Lord, let's say. Okay, you may not know, have a lot of things available to you skill-wise, but if you look at that, where you fit into that equation, you're very powerful. <clears throat> when the world's economic system goes under, you need not to go under. There might not be money to throw up on the ceiling, but the Lord will supply and will bring you through. I have had God's providence proven in my life time and time again. One of the most difficult things for me was to get out of debt and stay out of debt. I even had some problems years ago trying to run the ministry on borrowed money. I borrowed more money than I would have borrowed just for myself because it was for the ministry. I was going to do great things for God and God was going to help me pay it back. Except that God did not feel this way. So when I got into debt and the Lord did not miraculously help me to pay it back, I was really shaken. I had to work to pay it back. It took me years to get out of debt. <clears throat> after that one major after that one major getting into debt, I decided the Lord did not want me to have credit cards anymore. So I got rid of them and paid them off. But temptations would continue to come along. There would be something wonderful that I could do for the Lord, but I just did not have quite enough money. And there would be a way to write a postcard check. I'm sorry. And there would be a way to write a post-dated check or to borrow some money. Every time I have ever done this, with the exception of one or two occasions where it was clear that the Lord led me to do it and approved of it, I got myself into sticky and painful messes. The Lord was trying to teach me about not being in bondage to credit, about not selling myself into slavery, about not getting myself into a position where it, if he wanted to lead or guide me some other way, I wouldn't be, I would be locked in an, an I would be locked in and unable to move. I have had many people come to me and say, you know, I would like to serve the Lord full time, but I've got my house payment. Hard to beat that. I got my house payment, this payment, that payment, and I just can't. Who would make all the payments if I were to really go out and serve God? I am not saying that in order to have the blessing of the Lord, we have to totally abstain from all credit. But what I am saying is that I believe God wants to be consulted first before those of us who belong to him get into debt. Each debt is a form of slavery, and Jesus has made it very clear that no man can serve two masters. When I promised the Lord, Lord, I will never borrow another cent unless I ask for and obtain your approval first. He did not authorize me to borrow another cent for the longest time. I had been addicted to credit. It was to the point where in order to pay a one loan, I had to take out another one. It was like being addicted to drugs. It was terrible. Many Christians are addicted to debt and spend the best part of their lives feeding banks, insurance companies, and finance companies because the interest adds up and up and up. These companies are making a killing off of God's people. Let's see if we go further with that. Let me read this highlighted thing and then we'll pick it up here again tomorrow. The word of the Lord is very clear. It says that if we follow him and obey his commands and do what he tells us to do, then he will not be then we will not be the ones borrowing money we will be the ones who are lending money to those who do not know him he wants us to be the head and not the tail interesting we'll leave that there love you god bless